Smart Solutions. Add on desire. Hello, my dear students. I hope you all are doing great. Yeah, again, we are here with another chapter with an amazing style we are going to study that is what the social study and this chapter is actually very important that is what we are going to study today basically we are going to deal with the theme first or the part first or the unit first of your textbook that is diversity on the earth yeah so what we are going to study we are going to study chapter number four that is the polar region and believe me, this chapter is an amazing chapter and with this chapter, you will not just study, but you will get some imagination, some creation in your mind that is like, it would be like a movie. Yes, it would be like a movie. You will not just study, but you will watch a movie like that. Through the words, you will create your own imagination and it, it would be like the, somehow in the backside of your mind, the movie movie is going on the fourth chapter fifth chapter sixth chapter seventh chapter these all are connecting chapters are like a movie going on day day to day life you will have to connect yourself with this profession or with this lesson in order to get and assume and feel that feelings of the movie theater okay so chapter number four the polar regions page number 40 to 48 that is what in your textbook yes so where is the polar region where is the polar region you have seen the north pole and the south pole yes you have seen the north pole and the south pole on the globe the region which lies near the poles is called the polar region you know and we all know that in the globe on the globe we have two poles north pole and south pole and those regions if those regions close to the north pole north region pole or north polar region and those close to southern pole that is southern polar region you will be reading about the northern polar region in this chapter specifically about the northern polar region okay look at the map in next slide that is what i'm going to share it shows the north pole and its surrounding regions the entire polar regions has been shedded lightly notice the boundary of the region this is known as the arctic circle so this is the map okay polar region in the northern hemisphere on the world map and this is our india this is our india that is what northern america southern america and this australia and this Africa and this Europe and this so long even our India is in that continent what is that continent Asia so you can see this dark dark things dark on up above dark on southern so that is North Pole and this is Southern Pole so those countries are related or connected or close to the northern pole that is called northern polar region those country connected or related or close to the southern pole these are called as southern polar region clear so the northern part of the continent within the polar region is known as the tundra what is that called as tundra 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 okay very funny uh, name but you'll have to mind it you'll have to remind it you'll have to remember it the northern part of the continent within the polar region is known as the tundra okay tundra means very cold tundra means very cold since the tundra region gets very little sunlight it has a unique type of vegetation known as the tundra vegetation so whatever related to tundra it is tundra if it is vegetation tundra vegetation if it is animal tundra animal okay so this part or the northern part gets very very little of the sunlight means if they get very little sunlight in the sense they get very little heat because we get heat from the sunlight that's what we have studied the source sun as a source of energy we have already studied okay so this part is basically of that continuation like tundra vegetation those vegetables or vegetations available in the tundra region that is called tundra vegetation seasons in the tundra 
we have already studied about the seasons in our Indian context, in our Telangana context, in our Andhra Pradesh context. Okay, that we have three or four, three major con uh, seasons and all three connected seasons. Okay, in the Tundra region. Now we are studying in the Tundra region. It is extremely cold. It is difficult to even imagine the cold in the Tundra. In India, the sun rises and sets every day. In India, sun rises every day and sun sets every day. Every day we feel morning and every night we feel or every evening we feel good evening kind of situations. But there, this doesn't happen in the Tundra. It doesn't happen in the Tundra. It is almost dark throughout November, December and January. These three months means completely dark. No morning, no sunshine, no energy no temperature okay since the sun doesn't rise at all this is the winter of the tundra all three four months just very cold that is why it is named tundra and it is bitterly cold during this month bitterly cold you know that when it is extremely cold water freezes to become ice we know that how much zero degree celsius and zero degree celsius we get from the liquid or uh, uh, water to the ice form of the water okay in this extreme cold in this extreme cold water of the rivers lakes and seas freezes strong cold winds blow and there is heavy snowfall okay due to the severe cold dark and icy condition all the plants die they cannot survive because we know the photosynthesis process, we need water, we need oxygen, we need sunlight, we need soil, we all need that organs in order to create the uh, healthy, healthy and the beautiful plants or the trees. But here, no sunlight for 3-4 months, then means no vegetation. Even birds and animals leave this region and migrate elsewhere for these three regions. Okay, the whole region becomes dark deserted and desolate so you can feel the winter season in tundra region see the tin, uh, winter season in tundra region completely that somehow you will find very two four five six birds and that is only in the that time in afternoon time sometimes with no, no sun nothing it's just completely dark summer the sun begins to the shine in the tundra around february and march sometimes in february sometimes in march but not in october november december january no chances even mid of the february sometimes no chances so basically in february or march we get the sun here in the beginning the sun shines for a maximum of an hour only an hour after 24 hours in one hour and a half and then sets gradually it lengthens two hours six hours eight hours 16 hours and finally 24 hours then for almost three months from may july the sun never sets it shines all 24 hours how much interesting is this here three months completely night completely dark and three months from january or from may june july these three months completely day no evening no dark no night completely day but the sun doesn't rise overhead it just hours a little above the horizon the horizon is the place where the earth appears to the meet the sky okay since the sun doesn't go high up in the sky it is never very warm never ever even in three months they are not very warm or quite warm okay even in the three months of the summer it is cold but it is comparatively less cold than the winter months means cold 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 in all three months of dark very cold in all three months of completely three months like sunlight cold but little cold comparatively little cold but it's still cold it's, for us it is extremely cold due to the relatively warm weather some of the ice melts the rivers which are frozen during the winter season melt and begin to flow the lakes fill up and huge chunks of ice breaks off and float into the ocean as icebergs okay just imagine the situation all three months just dark completely silent no bird no animals no plants no trees completely dark 
ओके एंड अनदर थ्री मंथ्स समटाइम्स इट इज स्टार्ट फ्रॉम फेब्रवरी एंड मार्च हाफ एन आवर वन एंड हाफ आवर टू आवर देन फोर आवर देन एट आवर देन सिक्सटीन आवर एंड देन कंप्लीटली थ्री फोर थ्री मंथ्स मे जून एंड जुलाई कंप्लीटली डे but that is also we don't get directly sun here so little bit little bit warmer so the melted that frozen part started melting so liquidity comes and takes place in here in this season the land which was frozen and desolate in winter comes alive with color during summer with color during summer when summer approaches when summer approaches in may june july when summer approaches many multicolored plants lichens grass shrubs and berries sprout all over the park all around the park they bear flowers and fruits of different colors many birds and animals come to feed on them because three months completely day so they also come to eat those flowers and fruits you can see the summer season in tundra region we have seen the winter season yeah completely silent just white 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 layer everywhere white curtain everywhere white bed sheet kind of thing but here in summer season some red green red green vegetation you will find a beautiful part of that so many types of insects creatures birds they come and they fly over it vegetation let us study about the vegetation due to the cold the upper soil surface of the region is frozen into a rock like stick all through the years this is called permafrost what is that called permafrost okay this permafrost as there is little soil only some small points can grow not all we cannot grow rice or wheat like we use here some specific special kind of uh, breeds of the vegetation the underground soil being hard it is difficult for trees to grow because it is very hard okay even if the manage to grow the trees get damaged and uprooted with the strong winds and storms so most of the tundra region is treeless no tree at all somehow some bushes vegetation little bit part that's what we see we just saw okay the people of tundra regions the people of tundra regions eskimos however the word we got here but we al already aware about it from last first year second year third year fourth year fifth year sixth year seventh year now in eighth class so in all previous classes we have heard somehow about the eskimos so eskimos the arctic is region of vast treeless treeless plains icc's and barren rocky islands this harsh cold land is the home of the eskimos they live in the scattered settlement in greenland canada alaska and siberia where 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 greenland canada alaska and siberia that alaska was the part of ussr that is what you will understand in coming classes but now it became the part of united states same canada it's also the part of united states of america we saw the world map yeah so in united states of greenland is very close to that and then siberia for thousands of years the eskimos were isolated from other people they lived by hunting and fishing and they developed a way of life well suited to their homeland because they are not as we are we eat apple we eat banana we eat oranges we eat grapes we eat chapati we eat rice we eat idli dosa sambar so many things but they don't have that food choices or opportunities to eat they are very limited to it so either uh, hunting hunting in the sense birds they hunt some small types of species or creatures they hunt okay or insects they hunt and eat and some types of animals they hunt and eat and then ve local vegetation their roots and all okay the eskimos traditional way of life developed to meet the challenge of the far north okay so this part this lesson uh, 14th le uh, fourth lesson is all about that this fourth lesson is all about the eskimos words clothes colds and snowfall and all so it's like of movies this section described that way of life which the eskimos followed until recently the most commonly accepted meaning of eskimo is snowshoe netter 
snowshoe netter there are two main groups referred to as eskimos inuit and yupik inuit and yupik okay inuit in their language means the people or the real people the eskimos are descendant of siberia now a part of russia in the northern asia eskimos languages have been spoken for thousands of years but they were not written down until modern times they speak because they communicate they have their own language they have their own language you are enjoying right so they have their own means of communication they have their own language like we can we cannot understand the birds language what they do if the quail we know it's by it oh yeah this is cuckoo this is quail we know that the black color bird but the beautiful voice we know that but do we understand that no we don't understand same way they also have means of communication they also have language but the till now they don't have like leapy they don't have fonts they don't write it just they make noise and the other people understand this is what their style of communication eskimo's languages have been spoken for thousands of years but is still not written even till now even in modern times so there are three main languages aleut yupik and inupik aleut yupik and inupik the eskimos first entered north america about 5000 years ago crossing the bering straits from asia so different types of animals you can say them they are human beings but living like kind of another creatures okay so you can see this frozen animation we all know okay and these are the eskimos staying there and warming some reindeers and another types of animals uh, uh lagans okay so today the eskimos population is not large but it is growing it is not very large but gradually slowly slowly they are growing up okay group life their group life very interesting portion the eskimos live in fairly small groups they live fairly in small small groups there are villages of over 500 people just entire village can you imagine 500 even you get like this in your school in your school population is like 400 500 600 and they have their own village for this generation for this population okay on the northern alaska coast a typical group might have been 25 to 45 people that's it very less eastern group move from place to place throughout the year following a fairly fixed order of seasonal activities they spend the winter near the coast hunting for seals and fishing in summer they move inland to hunt caribou and gather berries sometimes they cover a circuit of about 1100 kilometers they cross snow ice and sledges pulled by dogs sledges their interesting means of transport like we have automobiles companies here we have different types of cars buses metro train aeroplane they have sledges pulled by dogs or reindeers or yak or any different type of animal and they travel on water in open boats called yumiak what is that call yumiak so if it is on hard floor hard floor of ice they use sledges if it is very hard uh, liquid on water they use like boat it is yumiaks in the recent times motor boats have largely replaced sledge and kayaks close cooperations is important if the member of an eskimo group are to survive in their harsh land group members would work together in activities such as hunting for example in eastern groups 10 to 12 hunters would be needed to harpoon eels at their breathing holes in the winter sea ice okay much larger groups over 100 people around approximately would work together to hunt caribou and large sea mammals such as whales okay some activities are carried out by individuals and small family groups tracking bears fishing with nets and gathering berries these are all, all they do with small thing like 
two people, two person, three person, one person, they do. But this kind of like hunting whales fish or very large size uh, creature, they take hundreds of people of that. Hunting and fishing. Because they depend on hunting and fishing. I told you, like we have lifestyle, we have so many types of choices to eat in fruits, in vegetables, in junk food, so many types of, but they are very limited in that hunting or fishing or vegetation. Okay. Eskimos are highly skilled at these activities, highly skilled because this is what they are supposed to do. They don't have a school. They don't have a university. They don't have offline online classes. Okay. Caribou hunting is essential for nearly all Eskimos group. Caribou are hunting in the inland during summer and early autumn. In some places, caribous are driven by rows of people into lakes or narrow streams where they are speared, shot with bows and arrows, shot by bows and arrows or even harpooned. Sometimes Eskimos set up piles of stones in long lines. In to the caribou, the stones look like people in the distance. The caribou would turn away from the lines of stones and be caught deep muddy water or through holes in the ice. They are speared in shallow. They are speared in shallow clear waters at their wares. Low dams of stones placed across streams. Fish. Fish are chased into the weir by people wading in the street stream and are caught up by skilled hunters with three pronged spear okay eskimos also use barbless bone hook on short lines to fish throughout holes through holes in the ice in winter or from the edge of the ice in spring season of that time so this is what harpoons a weapon to hunt seals look very sharp or something they catch from this and they hunt like that they make Heart of that and they kill, then they eat food. What type of food? Meat, fat and fish make up a large part of the Eskimos diet. Vegetables are scarce. Food is not wasted, but as the Eskimos depend on hunting and fishing, hunger and even starvation are common when fish and meat are not plentiful. They don't waste the food, means they don't waste their uh, means flashes or meat. But sometimes it is not available, even the fishing or the animals or the birds. So that time they starving, they starve like anything. Okay, meat and fish caught in summer are stored in shallow pits. These pits are dug down to perma, uh, permafrost, we just studied, and covered with piles of stones to keep out hungry animals. Okay, wood for burning fires for roasting or baking is scarce in most of the Eskimos area. Meat and fish are often eaten raw. Raw, they eat. Raw meat or fish are frozen and cut into thin strips, which are dipped in whale or seal oil. Some meat, especially meat from large sea mammals, is eaten in a partly decayed state. Though the meat becomes tender and easy to digest, if food is cooked, it is almost always boiled using the heat from oil lamps. Okay, shelter the Eskimos word igloo. Where do they stay? Igloo, like we have apartments, we have uh, bungalow, we have villas, we have hut, we have houses, we have buildings, constructions. They have igloo. All they have the common houses that is igloo means shelter. It can refer to any kind of house, not really the dome-shaped snow houses that many people associate with the world. Okay, many people understand as igloo means this type of house. This is entrance. No, it is not like that. Any type of house on that region is called igloo. Okay, so in summer, most Eskimos live in tents made of animal skin. Summer, for them, it is summer. But it is, it is still very cold. So they made with mammals or animals skins. In Western Alaska, dear students, very large winter tents are made by placing heavy walrus skins. Walrus, we know a kind of species, okay, or near, near that pond, over wood frames 
on the northern coast of Alaska, dome shaped houses are built of logs and whale ribs. Whale ribs. The dome is raised over a depression in the ground and is covered with frozen turf. Covered with the frozen turf. In Greenland, houses are built of stone slabs. Snow houses are used only in the eastern and the central regions. They are made from blocks of packed snow, not ice. Not ice. Built into a dome, larger snow houses are used as winter residence. Long tunnel entrance provided storage space in these larger homes. The entrance tunnel opens into the house below the floor level. Some people on Tundra live throughout the year in permanent houses built with wood and bricks. Somehow, in the rear half of the house and on both sides of the door, there are snow benches about 1 meter high. About 1 meter high. The rear bench is covered with animal skins and it is used for sleeping. Okay. The side benches support racks for drying clothes food supplies and seal oil lamps that provide light and heat and they boil their food sometimes two large snow houses are joined together by tunnels sometimes two large snow houses are joined together by the tunnels inside they create tunnels from one part to another part in instead of going out okay just imagine that is not just cold outside but different types of animals are also available they cannot see in night, the Eskimos, but animals can see. So they are also afraid of that. They don't have fire. They don't have that thing like lights or bow. So they keep, they make tunnel. Instead of going from outside, they go inside, inside. Okay. Some snow houses are lined with seal skins that are sieved together in and suspended from the top of the dome. So this is what we have sledge by reindeers, by yawk, by dog, they create one kind of cart and they tie with that and they go from one place to another place. They carry their heavy load. They carry their food like we have domestic animals here, cow, buffalo, horse. They have these animals as their pet. So dear students, in next video, we will learn about the same chapter, fourth chapter. We will learn clothing and craft of Eskimos clothing and what type of clothes they wear and the crafts what type of design they create okay like we have so different crafts available so what type of craft they create that is what we are going to study in next class so stay connected with other solution and with your nabi sir thank you very much add art solutions add on desire